Hey, it's Brian Rose from London Real, also founder of the Crypto and DeFi Academy. I'm here at MIT, and this is one of the classrooms that I used to attend uh, when I was a student here. It's got the chalkboards and the double action chalkboards, and uh, I'll draw on them just in a second. And we used to come here for lectures, and I used to sit there and listen to these professors that were like gods and teach me everything from engineering to vector calculus to thermodynamics to options pricing, futures, all that stuff. And it was in a classroom like this where I first understood what a call option was. It actually clicked. And I've been trying to understand it for months and months and months. And I could never get it in my head how it worked. And a call option is actually fairly simple. It's a linear payout diagram. It's a, a time decaying instrument. And so for an engineer uh, who was, like I said, mastering dynamics and fluid dynamics and thermodynamics, this really wasn't that complicated, but I couldn't get it in my head. And so for all of my students in my Crypto and DeFi Academy, I always tell you that, you know, these things take time and sometimes you have to take action and put these options trades on before you understand it. But I'm going to share with you the diagram that I was drawing to myself here. I used to come here at two in the morning, three in the morning and try to cram knowledge in my head um, because that's what the game is around here. At the Institute, we call it going tooling when you go going studying because you're trying to get all this information in your head. Um, there's a great um, pictures on the wall that are around here and it's got a student with a fire hose in their mouth with the fire hose turned on full. And that's the, um, the uh, sick joke here at MIT that, um, that that's what it's like here, trying to drink from a fire hose because they're trying to cram all this knowledge in your brain and you can barely, barely, barely get through when you're trying to drink from a fire hose. So uh, anyways, I wanna share with you what a call option is because I learned this in a room like this and I've been trying to get it for months and months and then it just clicked one night. Of course, later when I went onto Wall Street, I really understood what an option was when I started taking million dollar P&L hits on a daily basis. But I wanna draw for you what I figured out that night because it might be helpful and there might be a good context. So again, thank you to MIT for allowing me to film here. I didn't ask permission, but guess what? I paid my tuition a long time ago, so I think I got this coming. Let me draw for you what this looks like on the, on the, on the board, because I think it'll be helpful. So let's do this. I got my chalkboards here, which will be super helpful, I hope, as well. So again, this is one of those classic MIT chalkboard classrooms that I used to learn from. And it's great to see they're still using chalk or this this is probably some uh you know future equation that's going to solve all the problems on the blockchain over here and uh let me get this a little bit closer actually and uh but i'll just roll that up a little bit so we can get to our options trade um so again this is how they roll here the chalkboards go up present that idea to the class and then they come down where you got this i got the eraser going on here and I want to draw for you what a call option looks like on uh, Ethereum in this case. And just to show you that it's not as complicated as you think. And again, even someone like me, it, I struggled with it for, for quite a little while. So let's just draw this out. I always like to say, first of all, at MIT, we love a good X, Y axis, right? We love that. This is your Y axis and this is your X axis. In this case, I'm going to say your Y axis is something on Wall Street we call P&L. Okay. This is your profit and loss statement every single day. It's like, how much money did you make today? And that's always important when you're evaluating financial instruments. And I'll bring this a little bit closer so you all can see a bit better. So again, P&L diagram is super important because you always want to know what's the profit and loss of your trade. On this axis here, let me get a different piece of shocks, is going to be the price of any underlying instrument. But in this case, it's going to be Ethereum. I think it's nice to kind of watch this. And of course, this is all expressed in dollars. Your PL is expressed in dollars. Of course, you can always express it in any currency you want or, or in any other instrument too. Um, that's a whole nother level. So again, I would argue that if you own Ethereum, if you were being along an instrument in this case, your payout diagram looks something like this. But what does that mean, Brian? Well, it means that as the price of Ethereum goes up, your P&L goes up almost in an equal amount. So if the price of Ethereum goes up for $100 here, your P&L is gonna go up by $100. It's a linear correlation. And again, you can see what your P&L is here, kind of what you'd expect. Now, if Ethereum goes down $100, you're gonna lose $100. And if it goes down to zero, guess what? You're gonna have zero money left over. So this is classic. This is the same if you owned a share of Apple stock or you owned a share of Tesla stock, same kind of thing. 
Um, and it's a linear payout diagram, something that's a little more advanced, but actually not that complicated, but sometimes hard for people to get their heads around, is if you're short an instrument. So again, if I had sold you a share of Apple or um, some Ethereum and I didn't own it, I borrowed it from someone, you would actually have this inverted payout diagram here to where as the price of Ethereum went up, you would lose money. If the price of Ethereum went down, you would actually make money. It's called being short the market. And it's another concept that I learned here, right here at the MIT Sloan School of Finance. And then I applied later on Wall Street. Let's get into what a call option is. Uh, and again, let me get some more chalk that looks a little bit lighter. Nice to know they're still using chalk here at MIT. You know, with all the technical advancements, they're still using chalk. So a call option is an incredible instrument. And again, I think the derivatives get a bad rap. Uh, people say derivatives is why we had the mortgage crisis. No, that's not true. Poor risk management and uh, humans letting emotions overtake their risk reward structures is why we had the mortgage crisis. Um, not understanding the risk that was added on the banks. And again, I traded derivatives for 15 years, so I understand this stuff. Um, but I like people to get comfortable with options because options are everywhere in our world. They're everywhere. We constantly are buying and selling options with each other as humans. When you make a reservation for dinner at a restaurant, that's an option, actually. You have an option. If you want to show up, you can go and buy this beautiful meal. I always joke that my daughter has a put option on me. If her life turns terrible, she always has a put option, which means she can always move back home and live rent-free if everything goes wrong. It's a bit like an insurance contract. So as humans, we've been trading options with each other for thousands of years. We just never really called them options, and we sure as hell didn't know how to price those options. So I like to get people comfortable with options, not thinking that they're bad, they're evil. They're just a way of uh, pricing and exchanging and quantifying risk. And risk is everywhere in our lives. And sometimes you want more risk. If you're involved in cryptocurrency right now, it's because you want risk to that asset class. So if it improves or goes up or appreciates or changes the world as we all think it's going to, then you can reap the rewards of that risk. If you don't own any Ethereum or Bitcoin or any other blockchain or cryptocurrency assets, well, when the whole world wakes up and realizes this is the future of finance, this is how we're gonna have financial freedom, you'll still be sitting there on the sideline with your dollars in your account as they get inflated and you'll think, oh man, I missed it. So sometimes you want more risk because that way you'll be rewarded for that risk. When I traveled from San Diego to Boston when I was 18 years old, I was taking a big risk. New place, would I make it? I was scared but it ended up being one of the greatest rewards of my life. Probably the single biggest ROI I've ever made as an investment. Thank you, MIT. I paid $14,000 a year to go to school here. It's probably like 4X, 5X that now, but the return I got on that was probably thousands of X. Bigger return than you get on Solana with those pre-sale tokens at four cents. So I digress. Let's get into the call option. A call option looks like this. You could be on that Ethereum, like I said, and get this linear payout diagram, which is fine. If you're big on Ethereum and you're long the market, then of course you can reap rewards as the market goes up. That's great. But what if I could show you an instrument that looked like this? This is a call option on Ethereum. Look at this. Okay, now this option, in this case, would take probably take probably cost 1%, or say it was on uh, you know, one Ethereum, it would say cost, I don't know, $200, maybe $300. So that's what you would pay for this instrument. Now look at this instrument. This is a call option on Ethereum. So it's my right, my option to buy this currency, uh, this Ethereum at a strike price. Now this strike price is slightly out of the money, which means if Ethereum is currently trading at say $3,000, I have the option to buy Ethereum at say $3,100. That's kind of what that option is, is, struck, is, is priced here. That's the strike price of the option. So if Ethereum goes above 3,100, I'll have the right to buy it at 3,100. Now, would you do this? Of course you would do that. If you could buy something cheaper than the market, you would always buy it and sell it back to the market. So if Ethereum goes to $10,000 for whatever reason, who knows, maybe the Federal Reserve decides Ethereum is gonna be the new central bank digital currency. Thank you, Vitalik. And all of a sudden it's worth $10,000. I have the right to buy it at 3,100. I can sell it at $10,000 and I can make a $6,900 profit on every single contract I own. So you have this, this massive upside. You can see the upside is only different from the actual underlying the instrument with the premium you paid. So you paid an extra $300 you'll, you'll, or $200, whatever you pay for that option. You will lose that premium, but you'll have this tremendous upside. Now, let's look at the downside. Let's say Ethereum goes to zero, they find a bug, it got hacked, Vitalik, I don't know, ran off with all the Ethereum, whatever it is. 
Ethereum goes down to zero, well, if you would own the Ethereum, your, 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 you would, your P&L would be here at zero. But with the option, the maximum you lose is the premium you paid for that option, $300, because it's your choice to exercise this right to buy this option at 3100 If the Ethereum's at 2000 or 1000 or even 3000 why would you buy it at 3100 You say, no thanks, I'm not gonna go out to dinner tonight, I'm not gonna exercise this option. And that's the thing about an option, it's your choice to exercise this. Now look at this magical world. Why wouldn't you always want this, right? You buy this option, if the world gets better, you reap almost the exact same benefits as being along the underlying instrument. If the world goes crazy and everything goes to zero, guess what? All you lose is that tiny premium, 1% of what you would have lost normally otherwise, right? Where's the rub, as Shakespeare would say, where we're from in London, right? There's gotta be a catch. Or as one of my professors here at MIT said one time, there's no free lunch. He was a French guy, which means there's no free lunch. It's a term on Wall Street, which means you don't get anything for free. Even a free lunch on Wall Street isn't for free because you'll end up paying them fees with all the trades they do with you in the future. And so what's the catch here? The catch is this. This call option has an expiration date. So in this case, this could be a seven day call option, maybe a 14 day call option, maybe a 30 day call option, which means for the next seven days or 14 days, if Ethereum does have this pop in the price, I can exercise it and buy it at $3,100. But if, for example, I had a seven day option and eight days later, Ethereum pops and goes to 10,000, what happens? Well, nothing happens because guess what? On expiration, this thing disappears. It goes away, which means I no longer can take advantage of all of this upside of Ethereum pops. It's gone, it disappears. And that's the thing about a call option. It has a time decay. Every day it gets closer to expiration, it becomes worth less and less and less because it has a less of a chance of expiring in the money. And so call options are an incredible way to leverage your investment. Again, if Ethereum did go up to 10,000, you could make a $6,900 profit based on a $300 spend. I mean, that's like a 20X. You're never gonna get that buying the underlying instrument and no one will ever give you that kind of leverage, but you can get it with a call option. Now again, I'm not telling or suggesting anybody go out and buy call options all day long. Again, not a financial advisor, this is not financial advice, but buying call options, selling call options, buying put options, which by the way, is kind of the same thing, except you make money when the underlying instrument goes down. This is a put option on Ethereum, so if Ethereum goes to zero, you're gonna make the money. These are instruments that you should be comfortable buying and selling. And when you combine them in different ways, you can create all sorts of really strange payout diagrams, like things called a uh, strangle, things called a straddle, where you can get some of the upside here. You can do all these funny shapes and they got funny names like condors and iron condors and all these things. So you can piece these things together and create the perfect strategy you want for what you believe the market's gonna do. Also, you can limit your downside if you buy options, the premium you spend is the only downside you're ever gonna have. So if you buy this call option for $300 and you disappear, no one's gonna come looking for you, right? For the mortgage payment or for the whatever, because you've already paid the premium. It's your option to exercise. So there's limited downside when you buy options and there's unlimited upside. Of course, remember the option expires. So this is the trade-off. This is understanding finance. Uh, derivatives are something that actually create value in the world of finance. They're not some evil thing um, that are misused. Like any instrument, technology, alcohol, <laughs> anything, it can be misused, but that doesn't mean it's inherently bad. It's just a way of shifting risk between different counterparties and those that some people want that risk so they can participate in the rewards and some people don't want that risk because they don't want the potential downside. This is how the world exchanges risk. I traded options on Wall Street for 15 years. I priced huge books. I had billions and billions of dollars worth of options and underlying instruments that I traded. But it was after I learned this. And again, I would draw this diagram every night that I would come in here. And uh, I just still couldn't get it. And I was with my buddy, uh, Andy, who ended up going to Wall Street as well. And we were like, how does this work? How does this work? And then one day it clicked and we were like, oh, that's how a call option works. And again, if you're one of my students in the academy, what I recommend is putting one of these on in small size, $50, $100, and just watch it behave as it goes out to expiration. Watch your heart go up when the underlying goes up and your option's worth more. Watch your heart go down when it, it comes out of the money and the option's worth you know, only a few dollars. 
and watch it go to expiration. And then you can start to say, well, wait, maybe I can use this in my portfolio. Maybe I can sell some put options. Maybe I can buy some call options. Maybe I can sell a covered call. Maybe I can put on a bull call spread. These kinds of things are what you can do when it starts that journey of finance. And again, uh, the best thing you can do is to start that journey. And that's why I always encourage all of my students in, the, in our Crypto and DeFi Academy, you know, buy a small bit of a cryptocurrency asset and watch it and see how it feels. See if you can trade it. Try some DeFi protocols. You know, go ahead and try a liquidity pool. Do a yield swap. Do an options trade. Start getting comfortable and start building that relationship with money that you, maybe you've never had for your whole life. And that's why I really am a huge fan of cryptocurrency and the blockchain because my daughter, who's here in Boston with me, going to look at colleges, she's 18. She owns cryptocurrency assets. She owns stablecoin that are now giving her a return. She has an asset that's actually paying her yields. This is something as an 18 year old kid at MIT, I, I could have never conceived of. I didn't have enough money to buy what? A piece of property that maybe would have given me a yield. I couldn't buy a business back then. These days, everyone can finally have access to finance. You can have a real relationship with your money. Um, and again, I think it's going to change the future of money. I think financial freedom is our most important, important freedom. And unless we fight for that, or if we don't fight for that, we're all going to be in a very, very bad situation. And so the, the quicker you can understand this and the quicker you can stop giving away your power to supposedly those experts in the banking industry. I worked there for 15 years. There's no experts there. There's just people that take six to 8% of the GDP out of the market every single year. Um, and they try to convince you that you're not smart enough to understand your money. That's not true. It's time to get a relationship with your money. It's time for us to start exchanging value peer to peer and understanding cryptocurrency and options is one of the ways. So I hope this was helpful. Leave me a comment below. Uh, again, this is stuff I teach inside my academy and I'll be teaching as much I can. I usually teach in a suit and tie, uh, not with the guns out, but uh, I hope you, know, you don't mind a little gun show as well. And uh, yeah, big shout out to MIT. Um, I'm kind of walking through the campus here and just checking everything out. It's so, it's so beautiful to be home. Uh, I'm so grateful for the, the years I spent here. I'm so grateful for this place. It's just such an incredible place of knowledge and excellence and, and humility and gratitude and respect to the sciences. And uh, it's great being in these classrooms. So I hope that helped. Uh, again, leave me your comments below. I'll try to do more of these as well. Big love. Peace.